Hey guys, welcome back to more Rory McIlroy PGA Tour and part 6 of our career mode. In today's episode, we play the final round of the uh, Phoenix Open at TPC Scottsdale. Thank you for all the support on the series so far. Uh, there was a comment in the last video about increasing the difficulty of the putting, but... Uh, the only way I can actually do that is by turning the, the the beads off altogether. So, you know, I would literally have to be stood there to uh, <laughs> to, to to know how, if it's uphill or not, uh, or left to right. It, I think it would just be far too difficult and a, a step too far. I've already changed the swing difficulty to uh, be the hardest it can be. So, as you see in the last episode, um, you know, you have to swing absolutely perfectly for. Uh, to, to get the perfect shot basically so yeah uh, we'll let the two commentators take you through the introduction to the final round this is EA Sports PGA Tour coverage coming up next Welcome to the stadium course, TPC Scottsdale in Arizona. It's a masterful blend of challenge and playability designed by the team of Tom Weisskopf and Jay Morish. Rich Lerner alongside Frank Navalo for EA Sports. The changes, Rich, they made in 2014 have just added a luster to this great venue that uh, hosts the PGA Tour event each and every year. And it's a great test for any level of play. So here we go then. We're teeing off quite a while before any of our rivals, so... The round at TPC Scottsdale, first hole, 403 yard par four, Frank, walk us through. The length of the hole hasn't changed, but the addition of that one bunker down the left side that makes the player think is certainly the first new addition. Do you try and fly that bunker, or do you lay up? And it certainly changes the length of that second shot. That's pretty good. It's got to be 300 yards, isn't it? Settles in, looking to knock it in tight. Frank, what's so compelling about rivalries in sports is that athletes need each other if they're going to go to great heights. Joe Frazier needed Muhammad Ali to solidify his legend. Jack Nicklaus probably needed Arnold Palmer to go to a place that he had not been. And I think that's true across the board as we look at rivalries in sports. I think it defines careers, Rich. Uh, it's not until those players retire that they realized how important it was to have that, that foe. You know, so often we're, we're living in the, presence, in the present like we are now with Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy. And it's not for years to come that we'll realize the sport wouldn't have been the same with one without the other. As is par. I love how they, they talk about Rory McIlroy in this game, as if he's some sort of legend. Forty-two yards. Yeah, they've added a new tee, changed the bunkering down the right side. Still a semi-blind tee shot, a hole that bends softly to the left side. The bunkering around this green has changed. Still, it requires a very precise tee shot. That's an absolute tracer right there. In the fairway, and well over 320 yards. Oh, it looked like you caught a flyer right there, Frank. Well, I don't know what he caught, but this is way too much. So the second of the par four goes begging, and now I'll have to rely on the short game. Yeah, but a short game, as we all know, can uh, redeem a lot of mistakes. Let's see if he does it here. It's not too bad here. So, yeah, uh, what I mean by the beads is, is this grid here that you can see, sort of where the, the lines are coming across to show you which way it's breaking. Um, I would have to turn that off and it would be completely, I mean, how would I know which way this, this, uh, this, uh, breaks? So it, it would just be impossible. So, nice put there though, off the fringe. In the cup, what a shot, can't get much better than that. <clears throat> Frank, what's the strategy here off the tee at the par 5 third? For the long hitters, they still think that they can reach this par five and two comfortably with a good tee shot. For the shorter hitters, it really is a thought about where you lay up that second shot to try and leave a good third shot yardage in. Still a good tee shot though, that hazard down the right side protects against someone who's a little too cavalier off the tee. Okay, the second shot now at this par five. 
I'm going to have to be careful here. But the wind should uh, bring this up a little bit. Oh, it's brought it up too much. Come on. It's the not cabin. the worst. Swallowed up. Just trying to make clean contact from the rough. I'm going to flop this up once again. From this position. That's pretty good. How good was that, Frank, from the rough? Oh, that's amazing. That's a master class in short game. Birdie putt coming up. Had a par on this hole yesterday. And there we go. And with the birdie, moves into the top ten on the leaderboard. And moves into some very good company. Here now at the par three fourth. Frank, what's the setup here? Plays a little downhill, so it won't play its full 180 yards. You can perhaps... Uh, take one club off the uh, decision off the tee. The green, as you can see now, is a little wider than what it was deep. Um, the bunkering, though, is, uh, is certainly excellent. There. A little pop bunker on the right side. One there if you come up a little short. And there's another one on the left side, should you pull your tee shot. Well, we'll settle for that. Right on the dance floor. Standing over this putt, concentrating on the reed. That's a solid par. Still in it, Frank. Now to the fifth hole and a challenging par four. Slightly longer this year. Played off a new tee at the back, and there used to be two bunkers down the right side. They've now been uh, well, put together to form one and in the perfect position that really make you uh, think about your tee shot. It takes a very big drive to try and carry that bunker on the right. It's going to be at least 315 plus yards to get past that. Green itself still tilts a little left to right and back towards the player. Well, we're going to have to go an extra club because of the wind here. Let's see how it goes. Nope, that's in the bunker. bunker Slap bang the in the middle of it. That one is in the bunker. Frank, there's nothing like catching a bunker shot. Just perfectly splashes out, lands softly, and just runs up to that hole. Yeah, it's like 3D. There's the component in the strike where it's going to land, and then the third part of it is how much will it roll. Just a couple of feet. Pretty good. Pretty good so far. This round, five holes in. We're two under at the moment. Now to the par four sixth. Decision time, Frank. Driver, or do you go with three wood? A lot of that's going to depend on if there's any breeze. If the breeze is at your back, you can drive it all the way down the right side and take those two bunkers down the right completely out of play. This hole's been slipping. Well, that is terrible. It hasn't increased with that bunkering and that choke point. So, the strategy. Do you have the length to get past them? Or, if you have to lay up, it's going to leave a much longer second shot. Nope. Playing this par four, still not on the green after that second shot. But still not done. Um, a good third shot, maybe get away here with par. It's tough Ooh. to take an extra club out of that lie, Rich, because it's always in the back of your mind. If you hit it properly, it's going to email the green. He gave that one everything he had in the Get in. Well, uh, that just is it. Amazing. Just a mind blower right there. Absolutely incredible. He made the shot. On to the par 3-7th. 215 yards from that back tee box, Frank. This hole hasn't really changed. Still has that V-shaped green where it's very narrow in the front. Uh, a high-flying shot in here that carries that front edge, and you'll find the further and further you go back there, the more receptive, and that green starts to widen. Well, that's the best that was going to be on the fringe. Not too bad. All right, Frank, just on the fringe, he might be thinking about making this. Yeah, he's a better chipper than you, Rich. That's pretty damn good. Airtight, no mistakes, solid shot. And yet another green in regulation. He's made it.
Now here at the par 4 8, slight dogleg to the left, Frank. And this dogleg's made more severe now by the addition of two bunkers. Uh, this was a bunkerless hole off the tee in years gone by, but those two bunkers certainly make this nope. a sharper dogleg. And because it forces the player to go down the right side, adds length to the already long 475 yards. Well, let's see what they can do with this shot from the second cut, 160 yards away. Not sure how this one will react coming out. So from the rough back to the fairway, that's the right way to go. Yeah, it didn't take the bait, and at least now he's only going to play the price of a poor tee shot. Still got a good chance, though, getting away with par. That's really okay. Distance control there, playing well to his strengths. You don't want to let this one get away. This is about concentration and focus at this point. Get in there. Another par. Just to sort us out a little bit. And well, Furyk has uh, already moved to nine under. Side now at the ninth. And Frank, what do you think of this par four? Nice way to finish the front nine, Rich. Very thin green, uh, protected by that little splash bunker in the front. Um, iron players get a real advantage here. One bunker down the right side to be aware of off the tee, though. I doubt anybody could carry that. Hmm. What a drive. Just tattooed that. Second shot. Good look at the green. Come on. Oh, it's just spun back off. He'll be disappointed with that, no doubt. The swing didn't quite look right on that one. Could chip this in, though. No. Ooh, close. So another par. Is this one for par? Don't think this is going to be our weekend. Well, that was a nearly flawless performance on the front side, but Frank, we know it's an 18-hole game, isn't it? That's right. Now's not the time to pat yourself on the back. Headed for the bunker? Oh, come on. Oh, Rich, it's not rough, too bad. Rough. That ball is needle-nosed down. Can't even see it from here. Just in the first cut of rough, not a bad lie. The only issue is he might get a jumper here. Again. Frank did the Just struggling a little bit here. Yeah. In the end, really, you could have turned that into a disaster instead. Actually, a good chance, really, to uh, perhaps get away with par. Get oh, well. Okay, good shot on the dance floor. Good one. Once again. No problems there. Yeah, it keeps the round going, keeps the momentum on his side. Moving on to the 11th hole, Frank Water all along the left side, 472 yards. How do you handle this one? Well, this one's weird because the tees are a little off center. They start down the right side, which makes it into a dog leg. And uh, you mentioned the water, it always comes into play. And there are zero fairway bunkers. You don't need them here at 11 because really it's all about the tee shot. Find the fairway, then uh, even though it's a long par four, you should be able to at least attack that green safely. Miss the fairway to the right, which is the barrel outside, and your problems are just starting. So miss the fairway, and now he's back where he needs to be. Yeah, minimize the problems. Once again, there's a ball striking clinic right there. Another dazzling approach shot. Pretty close. Locked in on the read and the speed. Once again, just managing to hold ourselves together here, giving ourselves a chance. Well, Frank, this is kind of the forgotten par three on the back nine here at TPC Scottsdale. All of that attention on hole number 16. What do you think of the par three 12? This is by far tougher, Rich. Uh, downhill tee shot, especially off that back tee. Bunkering down the left, sort of t it, it, it catches your eye. But it also nope. takes your eye off the water, which is behind and to the right of this green. Got to be careful. This is a real sleeper, this par three. You don't want to make a habit of it in the bunker again off the tee. All right, so green side bunker. What's he looking to do with this shot, Frank? 
You really have to look at the amount of green you've got to play with. You don't have to try and fly the ball right by the flag. Allow it to run. Plus, if you can get it to run like a putt, you never know. It might just go in. Another decent putt. And he has it. A good putt redeems all. Par 5, 13th. Chance for birdie or maybe even eagle if you're bold and brave enough. But also, Frank, chance for disaster here? Well, there is. Water very much in play down the right side. There's a bunker down the left, too. If you finish up in that, there's no way you're going for this par 5 and 2. Then it becomes a little bit of a zigzag mission. Um, the second shot either has to be hit down the right side, just skirting that bunker in the front, or it has to be all carried. Pretty good. That is very good. Yes. Finally, an approach shot that goes well. And this could be Eagle. Come on. And we move to third on the leaderboard. At the 14th now, it's a par four. And a dog leg left once again. The bunker on the left side has been pushed out to the fairway to really make you think whether or not you can carry that. It's a lengthy second shot because it's going to play a little bit uphill. And this green is well protected on the left side with the two bunkers. They'll pay a little bit of a price for missing the fairway here because from that rough, you cannot control the spin on the golf ball. Second shot coming out of the rough here. Well, from in trouble, Rich, at least he's back in play. On the fairway, from the rough. Chance to get it close here. Has hit a lot of quality shots into these strong wins today. Mark of a good player. Again, a very good shot. This one's safely on. Once again, we managed to hold the par. Good roll. Solid. That's a par. Ten under par. All right, Frank, now Four the holes to go. We are teed up at the par 5 15th hole. Plenty to talk about here. Yeah, the fairway down the left side is anything other than straight. It's more like a shipwreck, the raggedness of it. And that water in play, well, if you do find one on the fairway, you can sort of always wave across to the people that are walking down the 11th hole. Find the fairway, you can reach this par five and two. A little bit of an island looking green there, bunker on the left, and also another bunker just short right. But a fairway missed here. Well, you can rack up five, six, seven. We've seen all sorts of scores here at 15. Appears to be a smart shot, Frank. Come on. Yeah, no problem here, that's gonna fly all the way. Oh, well, that one didn't work out didn't look bad in the air it hit the green but didn't sit yeah it was never gonna stop and setting up here in the rough well we'll settle for that putting all of his talents on display here from the rough and he knocks it really close beautiful shot We got the birdie. Our putting has been fantastic today. And we got the birdie there. Three behind the leader. In the right direction. Now to the 16th hole. And Frank, what makes this so special is the walk underneath the grandstands. It's the gladiator coming into the Coliseum. That's a perfect description, Rich. And that's why this hole is unlike any other hole on the PGA Tour. The atmosphere that the players feel on that tee, they cannot prepare for they can't experience anywhere else. This is a once-in-a-lifetime par three. And when you look at it from up high with the blimp view, it, it sort of appears as though they've dropped Fenway Park or Wrigley Field right into the desert. And this is a sellout crowd. I mean, this is 20,000 fans, and there's, there's nothing like it. There's not a single hole in golf that has more fans on it than the 16th here at TPC Scottsdale. Well, you couldn't ask for much more than that except to make it.
just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Not bad. Now to the 17th, and Frank, fair to say this is one of the best short par fours in all of golf? It is. The, the drivable par four that's designed the way it's meant to be played is a winner. The ones that are just shortened to be made drivable, they don't work. This was designed, was designed to be a 17th hole, and it was designed to be drivable. No! Wow. Again, off the tee and in the bunker. Great knees, great hands in this shot. Yeah, touch. You, you, you have to have that feel. You have something between the ball and the club face. So it's a different feel, but you also have to have imagination. What a redemption chance here had Bogey yesterday. Racking them and stacking them. That's 12 under par now for the tournament. Well, we're going to be the clubhouse leader. Frank, if you were trying to win the tournament out here at TPC Scottsdale, this is all you want down the stretch. It is. There's a short bunker there, obviously, for the recreational player to respect. Three bunkers down the right side protect it, and that new bunkering um, situation down the left there to stop the attack of a Bubba Watson or a J.B. Holmes. Now, this tee shot is going to have to be respected, and the green, too, is anything other than flat. Ready for a second shot, trying to knock it on the green. Oh, no. That one is bunker bound. That's right. Oh. Playing this par four. Still not on the green after that second shot. But still not done. Um, a good third shot. Maybe get away here with par. Just flop it up again. And once again, it's going to be an unblemished score. And we've given ourselves every chance if... Um, Corpga doesn't do as well as he has been doing. Another par there. Still in it, Frank. And we'll see how we've done. Frank, it was a great setting with great crowds. We saw plenty of very good golf. Your thoughts? Well, I think the course really extracted some of the, the golf that we saw. It forced these players to play uh, just some great golf. And it wasn't just like a you know, pitch and a putt golf course. So I, I, I think seeing the guys tested. So seeing the players tested at this level, um, it was a treat. Well, second in the end with Cobra managing to pull off a really good round, 18 under in the end there, uh, and a lot of players on 10s, 11s, and uh, we managed to, to, to do 12s, which is very, very good. So we finish in the top two, which I think is a really, really strong performance from where we were after two rounds, looking like we might even miss the cut to now... Finishing second, uh, still six shots off the lead, so by no means were we in contention. But, uh, you know, we did well, we came back at it, and uh, that gives us some confidence going forward to the Arnold Palmer International. If you've enjoyed that, make sure you leave a like down below, it really does help me out. Means a lot to me as well. Subscribe to the channel for regular golf content, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.